Uh, hi, so today we will continue with uh, what we had learned about functions in the previous video and um, we will start with uh, some of the very uh, basic uh, definitions which uh, are associated with the function and we will also try to write some very commonly used mathematical functions. So when, uh, when somebody is writing a function, for example if you p uh, pick your NCRT book, uh, a function will be defined from function will be typically defined from a set A to B, and that is something that we had seen last time. That functions describe relationship between two variables, uh, a relation between two variables coming from two sets, so set A and set B, and then it satisfies certain key properties. Um, main the main being that from each element of A there is a mapping to B. And also, each element of A has only one mapping to B. So for, for every element uh, in the input set, you don't have two out output values. And that is something which is a very intuitive uh, uh, property of functions, and that is, uh, in, uh, that is true in a lot of phenomena. So for example, if you uh, see it at, uh, in the example that we saw last time, I'll draw that again. So. So no stay. So we had like distance of Sonu from home. This was time. This was distance. At every point, there was only one point on y-axis, and that is something which is uh, which a function has to satisfy. So now we'll see um, some of the key uh, terms that are used while describing a function. So another way to write this function uh, is uh, could be f of a equals b and where a is coming from, uh, so let me write, write, write it down. So where A is an element of the set A and B is an element of set B. Uh, in most of the examples, the mathematical examples and problems that we'll be doing, um, A and B will typically be subsets of the uh, real line. So A and B will typically be subsets of um, um, re real, real lines. And sometimes we'll see some discrete sets too. Um, so for instance, uh, in the example here, A is uh, 0 to 24. A is the set, um, A is the interval 0 to 24, denoting 0 to 24 hours. And B is um, the positive real axis because it, it's the distance. And uh, most of the examples that we'll see uh, will encounter that. So now what are A and B called? So A is referred to as domain. And B is referred to as range. Oh, sorry, codomain. And the same, uh, as we saw last time, functions are a special type of relations. So even while describing relations, uh, A and B are referred to as domain, domains and codomains. So in the other definition that we saw as input function output, we have uh, the same, uh, uh, the same uh, sort of uh, terms coming up again, where inputs are coming from the domain and outputs are coming from the codomain. So now, uh, once we have defined uh, these domains and codomains, um, we'll try to f uh, find out what the domains and codomains are for some very uh, some some example functions. And another important term that I mentioned briefly was uh, range. So range <coughs> is the subset of values in codomain for which some element in A exists. So we'll start with a very simple example first. So let's take uh, two 
to example sets A and B. Uh, in A, we will put uh, uh, two, two of my favorite cricketers, Sachin and Anil, Sachin Tendulkar and Anil Kumble. And in B, we'll put uh, two, uh, uh, like a few positions that are, uh, that are present in, sp uh, in the sports, in cricket. So you have batsman, bowler, and umpire. So <coughs> now we are trying to find, uh, we are trying to as associate a function uh, between the sets A and B. And in this, uh, in this setup, Sachin is a batsman. He's also a bowler, but like uh, primarily he's a batsman. Anil Kumble is primarily a bowler. And so these are the edges that exist. And we see uh, that this is a function because for each element in A, there is an edge, there is an mapping from element in A to element in B. And for each uh, element in A, there is on only one mapping in B. So Sachin is only connected to batsman and not to anything else. Uh, Anil is uh, only connected to bowler and not to anything else. Um, and there is nothing connected to the element umpire because both Sachin Tendulkar and Anil Kumble uh, are not umpires. Uh, but that that's still is fine because th this is still a function because not all elements in B have to have a uh, 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 in, an input in set A. Another term that is used for uh, uh, input and output is image and pre-image. So batsman is image uh, of Sachin, of element Sachin in uh, set B. So the elements for which uh, a mapping exists are called images. And the mapping from set A which exists is called the pre-image of that, uh, of that uh, element. So the pre-image of batsman is Sachin and image of Sachin is batsman. Um, these are terms that are not uh, used that much, but um, uh, they are certainly useful to know. Um, so c coming back to domains and codomains. So here we can see since the way we defined A is the domain, which includes these two players, Sachin and Anil. And uh, B is uh, the codomain, which includes batsman, bowler, and umpire. And now we want to figure out what the range is. So range is the subset of codomain for which a pre-image exists. So does, an, does the pre-image exist for batsman? Yes, because Sachin is a batsman. Does a pre-image ex exist for bowler? Yes, Anil is a bowler. Uh, does a pre-image exist for umpire? Uh, no. So range, for this example, only includes batsman and bowler. So in, uh, in this toy toy example that we saw, um, we, uh, we, we tried to associate in for this function what is domain, what is codomain, and also what is what is the range. And now we will take this to functions which, uh, as I said, which we will typ typically encounter in problems, that is functions over real variables, and see how, how do these concepts relate to them. So let's take an example function. So in, in the uh, problems that we'll be doing and also in the uh, problems that uh, you would be solving, a lot of these functions will be described using equations. So we'll take some example functions here. And these functions are uh, like very powerful. They are used to uh, describe a lot of phenomena. So we'll also try to uh, relate uh, some some physical properties when when I can. So so let's take um, an example of a function. Let me try to make this again. So yeah, let's take an example of a function, uh, s the square root function. So yeah. 
so now we have uh, we have uh, write, uh, written in th uh, this in, in this format f of x is equal to root x and typically we will write f of x as y so y is equal to root x so this function can be equivalently written as f of x equals to root x or y equals root x or some something uh, um, or um, trying uh, so these are the two ways in which this function can be written or you could draw a graph to describe this function too so <coughs> in subsequent lectures we'll see how to draw graphs graphs for these functions uh, but now uh, from the things that we have learned so far we'll, let's try to figure out whether this function is actually a function and if it is a function what is the do domain codomain and range of the function so uh, so in order for this uh, this to be a function, this equation to be a function, for each element of um, the domain, there should be a mapping. So let's try to find out the domain of this function. So if you, if you uh, and we know that we are interested in functions from reals to reals, so domain of the square root function has to be something such that it provides us an, as, uh, as, an out, uh, as an output in reals as well. And uh, a square root function provides a real output only if the argument, uh, the variable which also goes in, um, is also referred to as argument of the function, is positive. So uh, you will also learn about um, square roots of negative uh, valued uh, numbers but they produce something called complex variables um, but here we are interested in functions of real variables so and square square roots of real variables are only defined for positive numbers so domain of square root x is given by uh, x greater than 0 or equi equivalently this uh, x greater than equal to 0 or this uh, is also referred to as r plus or the positive real line or the set 0 to infinity which is closed on the zero side, open on the infinity side, or you can draw it in a line uh, on the real line. So this is zero, this is plus infinity, going towards plus infinity, going towards minus infinity. And this is the domain of this function. So as you can see, a function can be described, in, uh, written in multiple ways. So you should be familiar with all of those. Um, and when when we want to deal with functions, uh, most of the times uh, in the problems that you'll see either they would be in graph graphs or equations. So this is one way to describe the function, and we have tried to find out what's the uh, domain of square root of x is. And the key thing that to remember here is a function uh, for all elements in the domain has to have some output, and square root x is defined for reals only for uh, non-negative numbers, so that includes zero and beyond. So this is multiple ways of describing that. Uh, now let's um, see the codomain. So codomain is a, a is is uh, provided by definition. So in this um, uh, codomain can be uh, the whole real line because uh, codomain can be the whole uh, a superset of the range of the function. So we can uh, th there is no single correct answer. Uh, there are multiple correct answers to figuring out codomain of a function because it's superset of the range. In this case, we take it to be the real, uh, real the whole real line. But uh, we know that uh, square root of x um, is only is only providing us positive values. For is for example, uh, if we draw, uh, list down some evaluations of this functions. So again, evaluation of a function is um, given by I inserting a value here and finding out what the output is. So if we try x and f of x, so this will be 0, square root of 1 will be 2, uh, 1, square root of 2 will be 1.41, and square root of 3 will be 1.7 something, and so on. So this is uh, this is some way in which we can write for any input. We can find out the uh, output value of this function, and we see that all of these values. And uh, if you know the square root function from before, you know that square roots are always positive. So the range of this function is also the same as the domain, and it's called and it's the positive real axis or. 0 to infinity or any other way you can describe this as. 
So, in so far, what we have seen is uh, once uh, we have seen the definition of functions and also the associated sets, domain, codomain, and range. And we saw an intuitive example where we had a very small set A and B, and we could uh, graphically see by edges what what was the do domain, what was the codomain, and what was the range. And we tried to map this to a, f a function described by an equation, and by using the property of uh, the square root that it always provides positive values and takes in positive values. Um, since we are dealing with only real numbers and not complex, uh, we found out what, what, is, what is the domain and range, range of this function. And in a lot of examples uh, that we'll see further on, we'll see that uh, we have to exploit certain properties that we already know from mathematics and use that to figure out the domain and codomain and range, range of a function and also other properties of functions which we'll learn in the next chapter. Okay.